Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song broadcast for this 17th day of February. It is Saturday, and we have reached this 17th day already of the month, and it seems to be flying by. Before you know it, it'll be March, and it's 2024, and today's topic is titled, A Look at the Master, subtitle is uh, A Rebuke of Carnality and Covetousness, and I'll give you all the dates of all the former um, topics on this uh, a look at the master series of messages and uh, when we're all done I'll be putting these into a playlist uh, Lord willing so but um, I'll give you all the dates uh, here in a little bit uh, before we get into the topic but uh, first we're going to start with uh, the scripture song for today but before we do all that I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world and he too can be your Lord and Savior today and he wants to be and he's not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance and turn to him and trust him as your Lord and Savior. And he'll wash away your sin and then he'll teach you and show you and guide you in all truth as you seek his face and have a good, solid relationship with the Lord. Amen. And uh, rightly divide the word of truth, which uh, we're going to go over a little bit of that today because a lot of people tend to take this uh, verse from Second Chronicles 7.14 out of context and apply it to America or say that well we're extension of Israel or America is the new Israel or whatever but uh, um, born again believers in Christ should understand that this is not for us um, or to us I should say all the Bible is for us and we can apply it in practical and spiritual ways but we should understand that this is to the nation of Israel and not to us and we don't have a land born again believers don't have a land and I think we get confused and we start fighting and fighting the government and wanting to try to warn people about what's going on in the government when we should be out there telling people about Jesus and uh, I understand your heart for people but uh, what about their souls you know we want to we want to try to tell everybody uh, warn them about their uh, physical um, bodies and and uh, staying away from these dangers but what about their soul what happens if they uh, hide and stay away from all these dangers and then they step out in eternity without Christ that's going to be on us you know <laughs> We're going to have an account to give for uh, those that we didn't tell about uh, Jesus. And we tend to pass people by because of their outward appearance. And we shouldn't be doing any of that stuff. We should be going in all the world and preaching the gospel to every creature. And amen. So let's make sure we uh, keep these uh, in the right uh, perspective and uh, areas. So again, Second Chronicles 7.14 is to the nation of Israel. And so let's go ahead and get into second chronicles and get the context here <clears throat> and know that they have a land we don't born again believers don't have a land uh, the nation of israel does and one day they'll be in the land again but right now our uh, duty is to tell them about jesus so they don't step out into eternity without christ as their lord and savior so amen all right so second chronicles chapter seven and let's go there to chapter seven and I encourage you to read all of Second Chronicles, dealing with the nation of Israel, and then uh, uh, some prophecy and stuff. So, all right, let's see here how many. So there's 22 verses here. So we'll read all of these uh, verses, including the scripture song verse from uh, 7:14. So here we go. All right. So chapter seven of Second Chronicles says. Now when Solomon, not a born-again Christian, not uh, anybody else, uh, it says, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And Jesus is the final sacrifice. He came to die for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day and don't have to sacrifice anything else. And... Uh, of course, God does want us to be obedient and uh, give up stuff and serve him and live for him. So, amen. All right, so chapter 7, verse 2 says, And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord, because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord Upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground and uh, the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good.
for his mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord for that, and it sure does. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord, and King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. Amen. So, uh, verse 6, And the priests waited on their offices, uh, the Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord, which David had, the, David the king had made to praise the Lord because of his mercy, or because his mercy endureth forever. When David praised, uh, praised by their uh, ministry, uh, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Yet that Israel, not uh, Christians, but Israel. And Israel stood, all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings, and the meat offerings, and the fat. Also, at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great congregation from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day, of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Lord had shewed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel, his people, God's chosen people, Israel. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his house he uh, prosperously affected and the lord appeared to solomon by night and said unto him i have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice if i shut up heaven that there be no rain or if i command the locust to devour the land or if i send pestilence among my people if my people and this is where the verse that people like to take out of context from the rest of the Chapter, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And of course, it is good to um, seek God's face and pray to him and ask for forgiveness of our sins and be forgiven and washed in the blood of the Lamb and be saved and get salvation. But uh, we need to understand um, that this is for the nation of Israel, not for born-again believers, but of course um, we do do this when we go and call upon Jesus and ask him to save our souls, and then we go and um, either get caught up in the rapture when it happens, or die first, and then go be with Jesus that way. So, amen. Alright, so that was verse 14, and verse 15 says, Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetual, perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me, as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shalt observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have coveted it with David thy father, <clears throat> saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be a ruler in Israel, but if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations and this house which is high shall be an astonishment to every one that passeth by it 
uh, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. Again, this is talking about Israel forsaking the Lord, uh, which brought them out of the land of Egypt. We didn't get brought out of the land of Egypt, maybe a spiritual Egypt, but uh, we did get our uh, sins washed away when we trusted Jesus our Savior. So again, we need to understand the context here. So um, when Jesus brought the nation of Israel forth out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods and worshipped them and served them, therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. So that's all of chapter 7 of Second Chronicles, and then it continues on in chapter 8, and so on and so forth. So there's your context there. And you might get upset with me, but I'm going to go by what, what the Bible says, not by what man says. And if you uh, have an issue with that, well, take it up with the Lord. Amen. And rightly divide the word of truth. So let's do it. Amen. Let's know what is uh, to us and uh, what we are to do as born again believers in Christ. And that's to go tell the whole world about Jesus and what he did on the cross and not trying to set up a a physical kingdom and uh, when I read these um, stories that that um, these men uh, of um, old missionaries and stuff wrote and saying talking about uh, bringing in the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Jesus well um, perhaps back then they didn't have much study or they didn't study it right and got confused so um, I won't hold that against them too much but we have um, more uh, light probably than they did back then but uh as uh, we study god's word and know what's uh to us and then uh, all that stuff and what's to the nation of israel and what's to the gentiles so amen all right and i've noticed that i'm having a slow connection again today so i'm not sure what's going on with my internet uh the last couple of days but uh hopefully this is coming through to you okay and you're able to watch it in its entirety and uh so might end up having to do uh, uh pre-recorded because I'm not sure if it's the internet or if it's Facebook or what's going on. But um, uh, so we'll try to get through this and see how it turns out. And again, if you have any issues watching this, I would appreciate if you please tell me. So those of you that uh, watch the broadcast, so amen. So I know what to do in the future about uh, future recordings. So, all right. So let's go ahead and get into the scripture song today. I just wanted to go over that chapter with you and explain that to you who uh god is speaking to the nation of israel there and uh the land is theirs not ours and america is not an extension of israel and not the new israel and all that stuff and so amen all right so let's get into the scripture song now for this 17th day of february and then we'll get into the topic for the baptist bread so here we go Second Chronicles 7, 14. If, if my people, people, Israel, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and, pray and seek my face, and, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, heaven and will, will forgive their, their sin, and will heal their land. land. The land of Jerusalem, amen. Yeah. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble Again, we should uh, seek the Lord's face and ask him to forgive us of our sins and uh, call upon Jesus and ask him to save our souls so we can spend eternity with him. So, amen. All right, so that is the scripture song, and we'll do uh, yesterday's and today's scripture song again at the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic for February 17th, Saturday, 2024, 
Another one of these, a look at the master, a rebuke of carnality and covetousness. And so let's go ahead and I will give you all the dates of all the older ones. And I believe the first one was on the 17th of November of last year, 2023. So let's see here. So again, idea if you missed any of these or want to go watch them again. All right. So the first one was on Friday, November 17th of last year. It was titled, A Look at the Master, The Great Question. So that was the first one. And then the second one uh, was on the, let's see, the second one was on the 24th, and that was titled A Look at the Master, the Conflicted. So that was the second one. The third one, third one here in this series was on, let's see, the third one was on, let's see here, number three message here. All right, so I'll get there. All right, so the third message was on the 7th of December, which was a Thursday, titled A Look at the Master, the Sign Seekers. So that was the third one. The fourth one was on the 14th, and that was A Look at the Master, the Brotherhood. So that was the fourth one. And then the fifth one, I believe, was the fifth one was on... Fifth one was on the 28th of December, Thursday of last year, titled A Look at the Master in Recognition. So that was the fifth one. And then the sixth message was the end of January, I believe it was. Let me double check here. So the, I think I said the fifth one or the sixth one. So I think it was the sixth one I was on. All right, so this next one was let's see this next one was on uh the 30th of january the last uh almost the last day of january it was titled a look at the master awake so that was the sixth one i believe i, I lost count there it was either the fifth or sixth one there and then the one after that so that was on the 30th of this year and then the one after that was a look at the master at your house and that was on the 6th of february of this month so that was that one and then we had one on the 8th and that was a look at the master three levels of quarries so that was that one on the 8th and then we had one on the 11th titled a look at the master the dysfunctional so that was that one and then we come to today's so this is today's uh, message on the series a look at the master a rebuke of carnality and covetousness and luke 12 13 says and one of the company said unto him master speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me luke 12 13 and so uh, let's get into the context here and see what's going on in this passage uh, here in this account in luke 12 so luke chapter 12 and look at this here really quick so luke chapter 12 and let's see what was it verse 13 let's see here 13 all right so let's see here go back to the beginning of uh, chapter 12 and give you some context so let's see it says in verse 1 it says in the meantime when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trode one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, First of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear yeah, in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. And that's God the Father, God Almighty. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten by before God? But every, 
even the very hairs of your head are num are all numbered. Fear not, therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows, right? So, as uh, Brother James said uh, in class uh, on either Monday or Tuesday, that that puts the animal rights uh, people uh, to rest there, that uh, human beings are much more than important than animals. So, amen. And uh, you might not like that, but it is true. And animals don't have souls. <gasps> you're, you're probably like gonna gasp and probably faint after I said that to you but animals don't have souls they have a spirit and a body and then uh, when they die they go into the ground they don't uh, go to heaven as many people uh, think um, I know that there's horses in heaven that's the only animal that I'm aware of that is in heaven I'm not sure if there's any other animals in heaven but we know that there are horses there because uh, Jesus comes back and rides on a horse and then we ride on horses too so so there's that but uh <laughs> So don't um, don't get too uh, in love with animals to the point where you have such an affection for them that it's uh, unhealthy. So and there's nothing wrong with it, with uh, having animals and uh, and all that. But uh, when you get to that point where an animal becomes like a human being and like a child and all that stuff, that's where you're uh, out of out of order. And uh, as far as God is concerned, so amen. So take heed to that and. Uh, it might not be popular to do what I'm saying here, but it is the truth. And if you don't like it, well, get together with God and his word and he will show you. Yes, he sure will. Amen. And, uh, of course, we're to raise animals for uh, uh, certain purposes and stuff and uh, all that. But, uh, um, amen. Okay, so let's move on. And uh, it says, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not them. Uh, therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows. Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be uh, forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth uh, against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven, and that blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is unbelief, um, not believing uh, God and trusting Jesus your Savior, and then uh, dying in your sin. So that's what uh, blasphemy in the Holy Ghost means. So, all right, continuing on, it says, And when they bring you unto the synagogues, and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer, or what ye shall say, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. And then we come into verse 13, which is the passage for today. And so that's kind of a little context of um, what was happening before this verse. And then it starts a new uh, uh, sentence here, a paragraph. It says, And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a diviner over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, this will I do, I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods, and I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then who shall those things be which thou hast so uh, which thou hast provided so so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward god and then it goes on to his disciples uh, said this to him and his disciples uh, said on or, or no he said this on his disciples excuse me so this is what he said unto his disciples afterwards he says and he said unto his disciples therefore i say unto you Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, 
what ye shall put on, the life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, whether, uh, or which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them, how much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, uh, with taking thought, can add to this stature one cubit? If, that, uh, if ye then be not able to do that which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye uh, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. And then it continues on down through the verse, and I encourage you to read the rest of that on your own time. Uh, so, amen. Alright, so that's a little context there of what's going on. And now let's get into the topic here. Titled again, A Look at the Master, A Rebuke of Carnality and Covetousness. And again, the passage is Luke twelve thirteen, And had some context there that I just read you. And it says again, And one of the companies said unto him, Master, speak to my brother, that he divine, divide the inheritance with me. And the author today is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So let me read you what he wrote on this topic here. All right, he writes here and says here, One of the most impactful statements that came from the lips of our Lord is found in the 15th verse. A man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Right? Christ then laid out the parable of a man who thought he had almost everything and in his mind was on the brink of getting it all. Verses 16 through 21, which we just read. Uh, the parable is perhaps the bio of many of the movers and shakers in today's society. Things have corroded the hearts and corrupted the minds of many who are one of the company. They grasp at inheritance and inheritances, shady business deals, and outright scams to build uh, others in ways unimaginable. When uh, I was a boy let alone in Bible days, beware, he says. So it's even more today than it was back then. So this, he said, happened in his day, and uh, even happens even more today. So let's uh, beware. Um, in verses 20 and 21, the end result of the uh, avarice is the just deserts of the covetous. Men desire to build temples of finance, hear and worship the almighty dollar, forgetting that life is not constructed on cash, credit cards, cash registers, or castles in one's mind. The contrast is illuminated in verse 21 as treasure for himself, thus being rich in houses and lands, but impoverished in God's eyes and eternity's commodities, is not rich toward God, right? In verse 20, the fool did not recognize that after carousing the night before, verse 19, uh, this would be his last gasp at life. Friend, one day thy, sh uh, thy soul shall be required of thee. Right? So, amen. So let's take uh, no thought of uh, things here on earth and don't get caught up in riches and, and uh, material things and look on things above. And realize that these things are just uh, temporary. And we should be focused on more uh, things that God says to be focused on. And of course, you know you have to work and make money to live and survive. And provide for you and your family and stuff. But don't get caught up in that uh, stuff there to the point where it takes you away from uh, God and his word and his um, uh, living for him. So, amen. Alright, so that was... The end of the topic, a look at the master, a rebuke uh, of carnality and covetousness. So, amen. All right, so now let's go ahead and 
get into the Daily Strength Volume 2 book from Douglas D. Stoffer and Andrew B. Ray as we're concluding this week on backbiting. And uh, today is Day 14, Saturday, titled The Sins of a Reprobate Mind. And it says here in Romans 1, 28 through 32, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So it's not just stopping doing it yourself, but when you start watching others, whether it be a TV program or, or whatever it may be, um, having pleasure that way by watching other people do sinful, wicked, wicked things is just as bad as doing it yourself, even though you might have stopped doing it. But when you're watching others doing it, that's just as bad because you're putting it in your ear gate and your eye gate and in your heart. And so... We need to understand that part of the passage there too. So, amen. All right, and that was from Romans 1, 28 through 32. And now for the introductory thoughts. It says, Men often separate sins into categories of what they consider big and little sins. But we all know that uh, all sin is equal to God and is all bad in God's uh, sight, whether those sins be big or little to us. And we're comparing uh, one another uh, or comparing yourself with another person, but um, so there's that aspect of it. Um, so he says murder and adultery are often classified as big sins, while little little sins might include things like pride, white lies, white lies, <laughs> uh, on or backbiting. Yet a closer look at Romans chapter one suggests that God's viewpoint of sin varies greatly from ours, right? According to the scripture, a person given over to a reprobate mind is capable of all of these sins. Furthermore, the passage tells us that those which commit such things are worthy of death. Romans one thirty two. Imagine that. The Lord views backbiting as a sin just as wicked and vile as murder. Uh, not only does the Lord find the backbiter guilty, but also judges those who have pleasure in them that do the backbiting and other such sins. So let's be careful of that and understand that all these sins are categorized in a list here and they're all um, the same to God and he looks at all these sins the same way that they're sins and we need to um, stop doing them. And uh, as I was reading in uh, Brother James's uh, book on Romans uh, volume 1, he was talking about how um, we tend to pray more about uh, uh, everybody's physical needs and when people get sick and are infirmed and all that, which is not um, bad to do, but uh, we tend to focus more on the physical aspect of our um, bodies and lives than the spiritual. And we won't come and say, hey, hey, I have a prayer that um, that I need to um, have somebody pray that uh, I would get rid of this bitterness or this anger or this... Uh, or whatever it is that you are struggling with spiritually. So we need to probably spend more time on those type of prayers as God desires us to do. So amen. All right, so that was introductory thoughts. And now for devotional thoughts. It says for children, David wanted his words to be acceptable in God's sight. Psalm 1914 is the reference. However, harming an individual with our words is not acceptable to God, right? So be careful not to harm others with your words because it's not acceptable to God. Backbiting is as serious to the Lord as physically harming someone or disobeying our parents. So, and of course we can apply that to adults too. All right, now for everyone, it says, how much do you think God hates backbiting? 
Uh, do you think he is just as angry with us when we listen to backbiting as he is when we are guilty of doing the actual backbiting? Yes. Yes, he is. So, that would be the big fat yes. <laughs> All right. So, continuing on, it says, Would you have thought that God would list backbiting with murder, fornication, and hating him? Does this reflect the importance of avoiding this wicked sin? Yep. So, good uh, questions to ponder and meditate on. And ask yourself. And then stop doing it. Or stop listening to others. So, amen that are doing it. That are backbiting. Alright, now for prayer thoughts. It says, ask the Lord to give you the same hatred for backbiting that he has. And then ask God to help you find no pleasure in saying or listening to harmful words. Amen. So if someone's speaking uh, harmful words about somebody else, um, like we went over yesterday, to say, well, I can't listen to that, I gotta go. So if you want to talk to that person, go straight to them yourself, or let's go together and talk to them. Um, and they're like, I don't want to do that. I want to just talk bad about them. <laughs> right? So, and to get away from that. So, and it can be a a fellow brother or sister in Christ that wants to talk bad about another brother or sister in Christ and talk about what they're doing wrong, but then they have a, a hundred things that they're not doing right, and it goes wrong with that. Uh, um, you have a big um, beam in your eye, and you're trying to get the mode out of somebody else's eye, and of course there's nothing wrong with trying to help one another and encouraging one another, but uh, what about the things that uh, you're doing that are against God? So you need to examine yourself first before you start going and, and nitpicking on other, every other, other person's sin or um, fault or whatever. So, amen. And pray for them. So, that's a good thing to do. And uh, as Brother James was talking about in his uh, Romans uh, Volume 1 book when I was reading it yesterday. And uh, we'll go over that book. Uh, really good book so far. Alright, so the um, hymn from the book is titled, What Then Shall Christians Sin? And we'll sing, sing that one first. And now let's go over the quotes from the next volume, Volume 3, Week 2. Subject is Aging Continued. So this is second week on aging. And let me read you these quotes here. It says, Respect is not inherited, but must be earned. Hmm. Right? So, respect is not inherited, but must be earned. Uh, wisdom comes from the Lord, and, his dis uh, and, and He distributes wisdom irrespective of one's age. In many ways, though not entirely, youth should be spent in learning, middle age in doing, and old age in teaching. Uh, when, excuse me, why would you be robbed of today's joys by worry uh, concerning troubles and sorrows that may never come to pass? Yeah, good question there. So, that is some of the quotes from Volume 3, Week 2 on Subject of Aging Continued. So that is it for today's um, subject on backbiting and the end of this week. And then next week we'll start tomorrow in Week 3 on Benevolence. And we'll go over all the introductory stuff on Benevolence and the variations of it and the usage. Um, and then how it's defined and interesting fact about it. And then the Bible study tip. And then we'll go over the week. And uh, tomorrow is day 15, church day, so no topic for tomorrow. So I'll read you the passage tomorrow, and then we'll do some fight-on stories from the more fight-on book. So that'll be tomorrow from the um, Daily Strength Volume 2 book. So amen. All right, now let's go ahead and do the hymns for today. And this first hymn, I could not find a full instrumental, so we'll go ahead and listen to this uh sampling here and see if it's easy to sing along with and then we'll uh, go from here so this is uh titled what then shall christians sin and we did this um uh, not too long ago um not sure how many weeks ago this was maybe like three or four weeks ago that we did this hymn so we'll try it again and this is hymn 578 in the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs book another uh one of these the consecration of the saint hymns a spiritual song Written by William Gadsby, who lived from 1773 to 1844, and Giovanni uh, Pe Pesci Pesciolo, that's P A I S 
I-E-L-L-O. And he lived from 1741 to 1816. No story for this one. And there's only three um, stanzas here. So let me turn this back on here and we'll listen to it first. And then go from there. Oops. All right, here we go. in the form of a question. Here we go. What then shall Christian sin because freed from the law shall sinners save by grace divine from holiness withdraw that would be no. Shall grace seduce the mind and lead the soul astray and souls who under grace are found delight to dis Great God forbid the thought Preserve thy saints in love While Pharisees set grace at naught Saints shall thy ways approve Amen So the answer to those first two stanzas is no, no and uh, don't be a Pharisee, and amen. All right, so that is the hymn there, and the references is Romans 6.15 and Romans 6.1 for stanza 1, and then stanza 2 we have Titus 2.11-12 through 12, and Romans 6.14, and then stanza 3 is Psalm 19.13 and Jude 4, verse 4 of Jude 1. There's only one chapter of the book of Jude, so that is the end of the first hymn, and uh, we're do the first hymn as the second hymn. So let's go and find a instrumental for this one. So this second one is "Be Still, My Soul," and I'm sure you're familiar with this one. So be still, my soul. Hymn. Instrumental. All right. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. All right, we'll go for this first one. Turn down the volume in case there's ads. All right, so now let's go ahead and I'll give you the title of the hymn and who wrote it, and then we'll sing it. All right, so this is Be Still My Soul, and this is hymn 654 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, another one of these Trust of the Saint hymns, a spiritual song written by Katharina Kath uh, von Sch uh, Schiegel, uh, 1697 to 1768 is when she lived, and translated by Jane L. Bothwick, and she lived from 1813 to 1897, and then Jean Sibelius, that's S-I-B-E-L-I-U-S, -E -I -I and um, that's 1865 to 1957, and there is no story for this one either, but um, there is five stanzas, not sure if uh, all five are on the instrumental here, but uh, we'll start with the instrumental and go from there. 
So here we go. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief and pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide. In every change he faith will remain. Be still, my soul, thy best, thy heavenly friend. Through thorny ways lead to a joyful end. Be still, my soul, thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, let not shake all now mysterious shall be bright at last be still my soul the waves and winds still know his voice who rules them well he doth dealt below. Be still, my soul, when dearest friends depart, and all is dark and in the veil of tears. Then shall thou better know his love, his heart, who comes to soothe thy sorrows and thy fears. Be still, my soul. Thy Jesus can repay from his own fullness all he takes away. All right, let's go back and do these last couple of stanzas here. Nope, sorry about that. Let me go back here. Sing these last couple stanzas with the instrumental. Be still, my soul. The hour is hastening on when we shall be forever. With the Lord, when disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, sorrow for God's love's perfect joys restored. Be still my soul 
when change and tears are past, all safe and blessed we shall meet at last. Be still, my soul, begin the song of praise. On earth believing to thy Lord on high. Acknowledge him in all thy works and ways. So shall he view thee with a well-pleased eye. Be still, my soul, the sun divine of life divine, through passing clouds shall but more brightly shine. Amen. So that is the hymn there, Be Still My Soul. Um, amen. And there's no story for this one, so let me give you the references and we'll back on to the scripture songs from yesterday and today. So stanza one, we have Romans 8, 31, 1 Peter 5, 7, Matthew 3, 6, Proverbs 18, 24, and uh, Psalm 31 through 12. Stanza two, we have Isaiah 46, 9 through 10, 1 Peter 5, 10, 1 Corinthians 13, 12, Psalm 107, 29, and then Mark 4, 41. Stanza 3, we have 1 Thessalonians 4.13 and 2 Corinthians 1.4 and then 2 Corinthians 1.3-5 and then stanza 4, we have John 5.25, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.17, Revelation 21.3-4 and um, Psalm 46.10 and then stanza 5. There's one reference, and that's 1 Corinthians 3.14. And then that's it for the um, references there for the second hymn. And now let's go ahead and put this. Where did I put that marker? All right. So put that there. And we'll put that aside for right now and then get into the scripture songs again. And then we'll wrap it up after that. So we'll do yesterday's and then today's one more time. All right, so yesterday was the 16th. Let's go to the 16th here. All right, here we go, 16th. Revelation 3, 10, and 11. Because thou hast, hast kept, kept the word, the word of, of my patience, patience I also will keep thee from the, from the hour of temptation, temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon, upon the earth. Behold, I come, come quickly, hold that fast which, which thou hast, that no man take, take thy crown. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And no man take thy crown. 
That's right. Now today's again. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then great how um, heal their land is in big bold black letters when it should be forgive their sins which should be in big bold black letters but uh, like healing uh, somebody's land is more important than having your sins forgiven Ooh, ouch which we know that's the other way around so forgiving someone's sins should be more important so we should be going out and telling people about Jesus so their sins can be forgiven and uh, um, Nothing wrong with having the land healed, but uh, I should be focusing on getting the gospel out and telling people about Jesus so their sins can be forgiven, and uh, less on the physical and more on the spiritual. And we always seem to get that backwards, don't we? All right, so <laughs> let's uh, take heed of these things. Amen? All right, so that is it for today's uh, broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song. And... Uh, then the Baptist bread topic, and then the daily strength uh, um, scripture verse, and then the um, more fight on stories from the more fight on book, and then the hymn for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the 18th, and 2 Timothy 2.15 is the verse, and I always go over this verse uh, at the end of the broadcast, and it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the worth word of truth amen so after today's we have tomorrow's which is uh kind of goes along with where we should rightly divide this scripture here again so all right so that's tomorrow's scripture song and then the topic for the baptist bread tomorrow or sunday starting a new week uh february 18th is titled eat and go and first kings 19 8 is the passage and tomorrow's author is B.H. That would be the initials for B.H. That would be Buddy Howard, pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in Jennings, L.A. And we'll go over 1 Kings 19 to get context here. So eat and go is tomorrow's topic for Sunday, February 18, 2024. And then uh, the Daily Strength uh, book we're starting a new week and this is going to be week number three on benevolence and we'll go over all the introductory stuff tomorrow and then tomorrow is day 15 church day and acts 20 uh, 2035 is the passage so we'll go over that tomorrow and then the more fight on stories for tomorrow we'll do two of them they're both pretty lengthy so we'll just do two tomorrow and uh this first one is titled Grant's victory for the South. So that would be the first one. And then the second one is three pages. So this first one is two pages, and the second one is three pages. And uh, this one is titled A Tea Kettle, A Pistol, and A Good Man. So those would be tomorrow's two uh, fight on stories from the More Fight on Stories book. And this is the cover to that. And it's written by Sam Gipp. And you can find all of his books at Daystar Publishing. Dot com is the website where all his books are available and so there's that uh there and then the um hymn for tomorrow only one hymn tomorrow is going to be titled we walk by faith and this is another one of these the trust of the saint hymns a spiritual song uh hymn 655 written by isaac watts and john uh, hatton h-a-t-t-o-n so they are the um 
writers for tomorrow's hymn. We walk by faith. So, all right. And then the cover of the hymn book. This is the cover of it if you want to get a copy of it. And uh, this one. And then the Daily Strength uh, Volume 2 book. There's four volumes to this series of books. And this is Volume 2, which we started a couple weeks ago. And they're all available on Melody Publications is the website where you can look up those books and other um, items that they have on there. So that's that website. And then the Scripture Song book and CDs are available on www.dailyscripturesongs.com. That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website. Missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. So you can pray for them and their mission work there. And uh, I know Brother Dean's still back here in the States, uh, in Florida here. And he's just waiting for surgery or whatever needs to be done with his abdomen or any other health issues he's got. And Sister Patty, I believe, is supposed to be coming back on the 20th. Uh, February, which is in a couple of days, unless they've changed that date again. So um, you could probably check that out on the website there to find out what's going on with them, or if you have them as your friends on Facebook, um, you can check out their Facebook page. And uh, so that's that. And then um, the Baptist Bread book. This is the cover from January and February. So if you order now, you'll get the one from March and April. And that comes in a box of 10, and it comes every other month to you. And it's twelve ninety five a month, uh, or every other month, for um, a subscrip- subscription. And you can handle hand these out and keep one for yourself. And uh, amen. So that's that information, uh, baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we should always be getting into and searching the scriptures. And as the passage uh for tomorrow in the scripture song, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, and going to God in prayer and seeking his face and having him guide you and direct you in all truth and uh, having a good, solid relationship with him. And if you're not saved, the first thing you need to do is come and be saved and trust Jesus and he'll wash away all your sin and give you eternal life and then uh, teach you and guide you and direct you in all the truth and how to be more Christ-like while you're on this earth and be a bold witness for him and to have a solid, good relationship with him and other believers in Christ. Amen. So that's that. And then I also wanted to mention this uh, book that I've been reading on the book of Romans, volume one, and it's really good so far. I've got a lot of good stuff in here, volume one. And uh, so this is the cover to that book. And uh, so this is part of the Christ Honoring Commentary series. And it says here on the back, there is more glorious truth in Romans than the heart can hold. Amen. It is God's grand presentation to man of our uh, lost condition, the Lord's provision for our redemption, and the blessed results of salvation both in time and in eternity. In this first volume of a Christ-honoring commentary on the book of Romans, Brother James takes us through the scriptural explanation of why each person needs to be saved, you will marvel at God's saving grace, perhaps like never before. So that's the cover of the book. I know it's backwards on the screen, but that's available along with all of his other books at www.jameswnox.org or go straight to the store part of the website at store.jameswnox.org and order uh, any of his books here and other um, materials that you might see. And then also... Um, the Genesis book that uh, I've been reading through, it's not in print at the moment, but uh, hopefully it'll be back in print here soon. And that's a separate broadcast I've been doing on the book of Genesis, a uh, daily um, devotional type of book there, going through the uh, different topics on the book of Genesis throughout the entire uh, um, book there. So there's that book I've been going through. So amen. All right, and uh, then uh, if you know somebody doesn't have Facebook, you can direct them to the YouTube channel by going to Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast and look me up that way and like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And then also the podcast I do where I read different uh, heroes of the Christian faith and missionary stories and just got done reading Brother James's uh, Tire Tracks book uh, last week. So you can check those out at uh, God's Messenger Lighthouse Podcast on Spotify or iHeartRadio or any other platform it might be on. Not sure uh, the other platforms, but those are the two I know it's on uh, most definitely. So, amen. All right, so that'll be it for today. So thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you. Until next time, bye-bye for now.